Hey guys, it's Webs here from SlideNerd. It's another day and it's time to talk about the material design tabs in Android. At this point, if you open our pre-lollipop and lollipop devices, you notice that we have the ripple effect which we added in the previous video for the lollipop devices. I also told you what libraries you can use if you want the ripple effect for pre-lollipop as well at the time of making this video. But now let's take a look at tabs and how we can use them in our app. The first place I would like to take you is right under the material design documentation where there are tabs under components. Now let's take a look at few of the points before we move on to code. So this is how tabs basically look with material design. They look pretty similar to what you had earlier except for some minor differences and stronger guidelines. Let's take a look at what those guidelines may be. So here are the important points. Tabs are in a single row. They should not be nested, which I'm, I'm sure you guys were aware of before material design came out. And of course, a set of tabs contain a minimum of two tabs and a maximum of six tabs. Now, I would like to know in your opinion what you should do if you have eight tabs or ten tabs or should you even have them in the first place. Do let me know in the comments below. And other than that, the current tab is highlighted with the indicator and the text color being changed as you can see here. And vertical tabs are a strict no-no. Take a look at that. They have said don't here. Again, nested tabs are a strict no-no. And there are two types of tabs as per material design, the fixed tabs and the scrollable tabs. Now take a look at this. The maximum number of tabs is limited by the view's width. Fixed tabs have equal width based on the widest tab label. So I think the third here is probably the widest tab label on which the other two tabs are going to have the same width out there. Here they have said scrollable tabs can contain more tabs. As you can see, there's an arrow here indicating that there may be more tabs. Now above, if you remember, they said don't no more than six tabs. So I believe they were talking about fixed tabs over there and here they are saying that you can have a subset of tabs can contain longer tab labels and a larger number of tabs out here. Now if you go further below they talk about the specs, the sizes, the measures, everything out there and ultimately at the bottom they have talked about how to add the ripple animation to the tabs when the user selects a tab. So let's take a look at this in code. At the time of making this video there are no standard ways or components to make tabs in. Um, in other words you either have to use a library or you can use code which is provided by Google itself. So if you say, take a look at sliding tab layout, that is the one component that we are interested in searching. You're going to find results from AndroidDevelopers.com where you can directly copy this code in your app and make tabs. Otherwise, you can go here at the bottom to github.com google slash iosked slash sliding tab layout or Java. Now I have opened this GitHub link over here. And you'll have to navigate a bit inside this. For example, you'll have to go from iOS to Android, go to Source, Main, Java, and here you'll have to go to UI, Widget, and there is your sliding tab layout or Java. Now, at this point, I need to tell you that please, if you're watching this video, don't use the sliding tab layout that AndroidDevelopers.com has posted because the Google one is more recent. Let me prove that here. If you go at the bottom, there is one method which is actually missing. Take a look at this method which says set distribute evenly. And if you go here, if you type for the same method, it's not there. Which means this code on Google's iOS CAD is updated compared to your developer.android.com's code. Okay, so it's time to copy paste some code. I have a package called tabs here where I'm going to paste those two files that are going to be needed here. I'll simply make a new Java class, call it sliding tab layout. Click OK at this point and it says you want to add this file to git. Yes, I'll simply copy whatever I have except for the package here. Everything copy pasted. All you have to do is fix the errors out there. So at the top, let's resolve the package first by removing that. Press Ctrl Alt L to format stuff. Click run. And all we got to do now is import this other class called sliding tab strip. So let's go back here and take that class as well. So go all the way to the top. And if you go to widget here, you will notice sliding tab strip as well. So let's take that file as well. Again, copy paste it completely. Make a new Java class. Call it sliding tab strip. Add this file to the git. Yes. And just replace everything out there. And at the top, you have to just resolve the package and do the necessary imports to avoid errors. And as soon as you do this, you will notice that most of the errors disappear because Android Studio is pretty smart at guessing things. So here, sliding tab strip as well as sliding tab layout are both imported. Now let's try to use it. Now comes the most important part. We are going to add our tabs here to our main activity through the activity underscore main.xml. At the time of making this video, my Android Studio does not render a recycler view, but maybe yours does. So going back to the text part here, we already have a drawer layout as the root. 
If you remember the earlier videos of navigation drawer in our material design playlist, I already talked about the two children. The first child is always visible, which is our relative layout in this case. Second child is our drawer, which is going to be seen only when you swipe the screen. So we are going to modify the relative layout first and make it a linear layout with a vertical orientation. And now we already have our toolbar here in the form of hash include app bar blah blah blah. If you go and see our design specification about tabs, you will notice that the tabs always appear to be a part of the toolbar which they are. In our case, if you go and take a look at the app bar.xml, we have nothing great here except a toolbar root widget out here. So we're going to simply add our tabs right below our toolbar as match parent, the height as wrap content and remove the closing tag and just close it. Give it this give this an ID saying ID tabs over here. Now since this is a vertical orientation, the app bar will be placed at the top followed by our sliding tab layout followed by our view pager which we are going to just add now. So just support v4 view view pager here. Again make sure that you just close it. So just press Ctrl Alt L to reformat stuff, click run, give this an ID saying ID pager here. Now we want to make sure that our view pager takes up all the screen space while the sliding tab layout and the app bar take only what is needed or necessary. So I'll be using layout weights to customize the height of the view pager. First I'm going to go to the app bar.xml and here if you remember we have used the height as wrap content. That is not a recommended height. Rather you should use the Android attribute which says action bar size here. So that your app or the toolbar remains the same across all devices even in the upcoming releases out there. So going back to the activity main.xml here for the sliding tab layout I have specified the height as wrap content. But for the view pager I'm not going to give it any height. Rather I'll simply give it 0 dp here and I'm going to give this a layout weight of 1. Now this simply means that the view pager will take up all the available screen space. If you go to the main activity now, I have my variables for the pager and tabs. I have initialized them both and all I need to do is go here down and simply say mtabs.setViewPager. But before we write the statement, we got to make sure that our view pager is fully constructed. If you remember, our view pager displays several fragments with the help of an adapter. So we're going to first construct that adapter here by saying class my pager adapter that has to extend the fragment pager adapter in this case. I've talked about the difference between the fragment pager adapter and the fragment state pager adapter in my fragment playlist. So be sure to check that out if you're unsure. So I'm going to click OK, Alt, Enter, implement the methods. Again, Alt, Enter and create the constructor that matches the super keyword. At this point, we have to decide whether we're going to have several fragments where we are going to be given a position by our view pager and we have to return that particular fragment or we are going to use a single fragment that will simply display different values. In our case, let's keep it simple and use a single fragment because I have shown you how to use multiple fragments in my fragment playlist. Inside my main activity, I have constructed a fragment class, pretty simple. I have a method here that's going to simply return an instance of my fragment by constructing it and returning the object. And I have the on create view here where I have simply inflated the layout which looks like this. If you go to the design part, all you see is a text view occupying the full screen with a central gravity and a text size of 20 SP displaying some text here. So going back to the main activity here, all I'm going to do is give a parameter here by simply saying in position to represent which position is being currently shown inside that fragment. I'll just construct a bundle here by saying bundle args is new bundle and I'll set that by simply saying args dot put int call it position. I should use a key but I'm feeling too lazy right now so simply call position here and we can set that argument by simply saying my fragment dot set arguments and we can put args inside that. Now all we gotta do here is inside the on create view go here simply and get a reference to that text view and set its value. So I have the text view variable initialized as well in the on create view I simply initialize it by calling the layout dot find view by id. Now I can just get arguments here which I passed earlier by simply saying bundle bundle equals to get arguments and all I need to do is set the text view. So I'm going to simply say if bundle not equals to null just for safety check and then I'll simply say text view dot set text and I'll call it arguments or bundle 
dot get int over here and pass the position parameter and we can we are done with that and of course i need to give another message by saying the page currently selected is blah 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 so with this most of our work is done about how the fragment is going to display content we can go here to the top where we have called get item inside this we can simply say my fragment just initialize it by saying my fragment equals to my fragment dot get instance pass the position here and simply return the my fragment for whatever position you have in that case and for the get count you can simply return three here for now and of course we can store that in a constant value if that makes you happy now going to the title of each tab it's inside strings.xml where i have made a string array here called tabs that's tab one tab two and tab three i'm going to simply go to our main activity and initialize that string array now we also got to make sure that we return the title for the correct position inside our tab in other words we need to have this method called get page title here so given the position you're going to return the title at that position so you're going to simply go here and you're going to say return tabs of position and that takes care of that so at this point everything looks pretty good all we got to do is go up to the top here and we got to set the adapter on our view pager first so we're going to see my pager here m pager dot set adapter new my pager adapter here and all we got to do is pass the fragment manager inside as an argument as you see it requires a fragment manager so make sure you call get support fragment manager to pass that in the argument over there now the last step just go here down and say my m tabs dot set new pager and set it as m pager so at this point everything starts working let's take a look at that when you run stuff this is what you see on the lollipop device and our pre lollipop device you're like geez man where's the tab name if you slide through your screen you can simply see the tabs are changing and if you click here you will notice it says tab 1 tab 2 tab 3 with that ripple effect that android developers was talking about but the action bar height, height looks messed up over here and the tab name also looks messed up so the reason behind it is very simple it's our styles.xml currently we're using a dark theme by default here which means we are having light text by which it is actually constructing the tab we can set a custom view for the tab which i'll be doing it in the next video but for now let's simply switch our theme so we can go here and we can say theme.light.actionbar remember a light theme means dark text so at the same time we go here to our app bar and if you notice i have specified the height here as attr action bar size now this arises this mess here is because of this attribute playing and messing with the hack that we used earlier for the translucent status bar so i'm going to simply clear the site for now and i'm going to use wrap content here to make things work and this is also one of the reasons why i don't use hacks so at this point if you go here and simply run at the top let's take a look at what happens so at this point bam there's our tabs you simply switch through you see the different tabs you click on them you can see the things the ripple effects generated over there that's the same thing works over here for the pre lollipop as well but without the ripple effect and the indicator here so in the further video let's take a look at how we can customize it how we can add icons here how we can make sure that the tab also has the same color as this app bar at the top in the meantime if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide node and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day